This is the third video in my series explaining how I set up my first ever NAS for storage and how I also use it to create my own private media server. Check out my previous two videos for why I chose the Ugreen DXP2800, what components I opted for and why, and the process of using it for first use. Perhaps the trickiest part of my adventure when it came to setting up my first ever NAS using the Ugreen DPX2800 was setting up my own personal media server. The increasing subscription costs across all streaming platforms, including the recent hikes by Disney Plus and Netflix, were the final straw. It was time to explore Plex as both a free streaming service, but also its feature of being able to stream your own private library of content too. There are a few options available, but I settled on Plex one of the most popular applications for streaming content. As well as Plex's own library of ad-supported content, you can use Plex to create your own personal streaming library of movies, TV shows, and homemade movies. I personally have very limited experience networking or using operating systems outside of Windows and Mac OS. As a result, I found the process of adding Plex as a Linux media server on my DPX2800 a little daunting. For a start, it requires bending your head around how the NAS actually works, as it's quite different to how I use my Windows PC. The best description of what you need is that you require a program on your NAS called Docker, which is a bit like an app store. You then require an app from Docker called Plex Linux Server. The Plex Linux Server you create on your NAS is the way you connect your library on your NAS to playback devices such as your phone, your smart TV, or your computer using a Plex app or browser. There's actually a lot more to it and experts will have issues with my descriptions, but for the purposes of using easy to understand analogies for the uninitiated like myself, I hope it works for you. So as a starting point, you need to install Docker on your NAS so that you can access and install the Plex Linux server. Thankfully, the process is very simple. On the DPX2800 using Ugreen's operating system, UGOS, you will open up App Center. Docker is a popular program and available on the front page of the available apps, or you can search at the top and install it from there. Once installed, you'll click on the image tab on the left-hand navigation of the DPX2800, which takes you to a library of programs called Images. These are executable files that you launch within Docker and create programs called containers. The reason being is they are self-contained programs in their own right. The Plex image you'll require to create your own media library can be found by using the search function at the top and selecting Linux server slash Plex. You'll then download it to create the container you need. Once downloaded, it can be found under local images and you'll need to start configuring the container to work with your Plex playback apps. However, we'll pause there and you'll need to create some folders on your NAS to start placing the video files for your movies and TV shows, plus the working files that Plex will need to operate. Using UGOS on your NAS, go to File Manager, then open Shared Folder. Here you want to create a folder called Plex, and then inside that folder, create three folders called TV, Movies, and Config. You can actually add more folders as required if you intend to store pictures and music and play back through the Plex app too. But for my own setup, I'm only interested in movies and TV. Next, go back to Docker and double click on the image, and you'll be presented with a long list of dialogues. Thankfully, you don't need to adjust or complete them all, and we'll just focus on the most important settings for this video. To start, we need to tell the Plex container to look in the folders we just created for the movies and TV shows for playback. Under basic information, you'll want to scroll down to the storage pool and attribute the folders within the Plex Linux server. The config entry is already populated, so all you have to do is click add and then type the name of the movies and TV shows directories. Then double click on the folder icon and navigate to the folder and select it. Don't forget to do the same for config as well. Also set the container permissions to read write for every directory. Next you'll need to switch network mode to host. Now you need to add three new pieces of information for the server under environmental variables. The Plex server container now pre-populates two pieces of information for you that the older walkthrough videos previously suggested you enter, and that's the PUID and GID. 
so you don't need to worry about those anymore. Instead, you will need to create three new variables for TZ, version, and plex claim. TZ is short for time zone. Version is a reference to the software you're using to run the server, in this case, Docker on your NAS. And finally, Plex Claim is your unique key, which is used to connect your media library to your personal Plex account for playback on other devices. To find your time zone, the Docker container creation flow actually includes a link to the comprehensive but overwhelming walkthrough. However, the information you want is under the parameters section about halfway down the page. Click on the link and find your corresponding location and then copy the information into the TZ dialog. For the version dialog, simply type docker. Finally, you'll need to visit plex.tv slash claim to reveal your unique private key and add it here. Please note this key is unique to you and should not be shared publicly. If you don't already have a Plex account, you'll be prompted to create one when you go to collect your code. Finally, click confirm. You'll see that when you click on the container on the left-hand navigation, your new Plex server container will be running. Next, if you're brand new to converting your Blu-ray and DVD library to digital format, check out the last chapter in this video for resources to get started. If you already have a library of digital movies and TV shows, you'll now want to transfer them to the NAS in the folders you created earlier. In my last video, I explained how to make the DXP2800 NAS visible in Windows Explorer. Check out the details in that video to make the process of copying the files more efficient or you can use UGOS to upload files directly either through the desktop app or a browser. The next step is to connect your new Plex server to your Plex account. In my case, this requires logging into your Plex account and telling Plex where to look for the files in my private library. As I already have a pre-existing server set up on my computer, I'm now switching to using the DXP2800 as the source of my new media library. However, I'll be walking through the process as if I'm starting from scratch. Next, you'll want to open the URL support.plex.tv. There, you can click on the Plex Media Server and follow the detailed instructions to guide you through the process of enabling you to direct your Plex accounts and apps to find your private content on your NAS. The key part of the process is downloading the Plex Server software and logging in with your account. The extra step of installing the software to manage Plex might seem odd, but it's necessary to connect your library to your Plex account. Once installed, you'll be prompted to start Plex Server, which will launch a browser window, which might take a few minutes. You will then be asked to name your server, or in simplified terms, the name of your private collection of media, and it can be whatever you like. If you're intending to access the library of content outside of your home or share it with friends and family, check the box below. Click Next and now you'll be prompted to create folders within Plex. You'll remember that you've already created folders on your NAS using the Plex server image for your container. What you're going to be doing here is duplicating those same folders and linking them together to the movies and TV folders on your NAS. Once attributed to the correct folders, your playback apps will be able to find the content to display. For playback, all you have to do is download the mobile app or smart TV app and then log into your Plex account and your private media will be accessible on the left-hand navigation under Movies and TV Shows. Do note these are different to Movies and Shows on Plex. This is the free Plex Cloud content and not your personal library. Finally, there's one more consideration for you green NAS owners and Plex users. As discussed in my previous video, when choosing the DXP2800 for use as a media server for Plex, you will need a subscription to Plex Pass to enable the hardware transcoding. It is possible to use the NAS personal media streaming without the Plex subscription, but if seamless playback of your media library is important, then you'll want to invest in Plex Pass if your NAS supports it like the Ugreen model. Plex Pass can be subscribed to monthly or annually, or you can buy a lifetime license which will never expire. The premium feature means that you can use the dedicated video decoder and encoder hardware support in your NAS to convert videos and stream HD or 4K video more smoothly to more devices at once. One interesting note is that Ugreen has explained that the playback quality of most video formats is constrained by web browsers. This won't affect apps on your phone or smart TV though. This limitation is imposed by browsers to maintain balance between optimal performance and a smooth user experience. Due to this inherent browser restriction, Ugreen devices are unable to transcode 4K content to its full resolution when streaming to web browsers. 
The maximum resolution for 4K content transcoded by Ugreen devices and played back in browser is 1080p. Now you're all set up, you might be asking how do you convert your DVD and Blu-ray collection into a digital format for playback on your NAS? It's a fairly involved process and it's something I want to explore in a future video. The details alone would more than double the length of this video. However, in the meantime, I highly recommend checking out the incredibly useful Make MKV forum for detailed help from a thriving community of enthusiasts. Thank you for watching, and as always, it would be great if you were to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home.